Greetings and salutations. This is Rick Koppel coming at you from Denver, Colorado. Another episode of Novel and Screw Guy. And today we're going to take a look at Bungie Desktop from Solus and compare it to Deepin Desktop from Deepin, Woohoo China. So, yeah, we'll check that out here in a minute on the other side of the intro. Alrighty, so we're here to check out uh, Bungie Desktop from Solus and Deepin Desktop from Deepin 20.2, I think. Yeah, 20.2, version 20.2. Both use X11, and uh, they both use Window Manager's Mutter for uh, Bungie and KWIN for Deepin. Because they don't really add much to the mix on those, they just use them. Can't really install any extensions that I found a way to install them anyway. So, yeah. I was going to mention that, uh, that Deepin had a history of having questions about its privacy policy, things like that, and, and what, what information it collects on the user. And I know some odd in it. Now, I don't know if this is some specific thing that they modified in Debian itself. It's just Debian 10. But when I went to install, I had never had a distro do this before. I went to install it. It required me to check off that I agreed to, to a user agreement and a privacy policy. Not sure where that came from, but okay. But I did for the purposes of this video at least, so I could get that out there. But I thought it was kind of odd and strange that that happened. So then, also, whenever I was, like I say, I used Debbie and Tins as base, and when I was doing some package updates, it kept, mar kept throwing in sending all the time. I uh, maybe purely functional I don't know but I never seen that in, in Debian at all sending I don't know what I was sending and where I was sending it to so yeah I would really recommend if you want to use Deepin you probably at least uh, use uh, Ubuntu's version or or another version art based Deepin or whatever Rather than the deep in the deep in system from China, also as I encountered a lot of Chinese stuff on it originally too, so I had to work through that. So you may, yeah, you may be a little easier for you to use Ubuntu or one another if you want deep in desktop on on your desktop. For the purpose of this video, I like to stay uh, as close to the original. So Solus made Bungie, so Solus gets Bungie. Deepin, of course, made Deepin. Actually, it's a I can't remember the name, but it's a Union Trans Company, something like that, from Wuhan, China, that owns Deepin, Deepin Desktop, and they put some proprietary things on there, so it's not thing. It's not totally false, false standards. So, miles may vary on that. I mean, I care a lot about that. Or you may be like, I only want false stuff, only false. That's it. Which false stands for free and open software. So anyway, yeah, with that said, we'll go right to getting a review of the Bungie desktop on Solus Fortitude and the Deepin desktop on Deepin. So now we're on the uh, desktop of Solus Bungie desktop entry. 
and to Solus because it's where the original creator of Benji Desktop. Trying to stay as close as possible with the original creators of the desktop versions. So I went with Bungie. Solus Bungie. That plus it's another plug for Solus. I think not too many. Solus didn't get as much attention as a lot of distros out there. It's not as big of a community and such, but it's actually a very good distro. If you want to look into it, check out some of my previous uh, videos on it. Alright, so yeah, so I saw Solus to, to illustrate Bungie. Fearing, hopefully, to be the best uh, example of it. So here we go. Now, one of the things you want to look at on these is the memory usage. How much memory does this thing use? So we'll go ahead, terminal, and it's a uh, top. Yeah, you can see here it's usually 1.19. This was OBS running. I tracked it earlier with OBS running. It was doing it wasn't actually recording, so now it's doing more than it was originally. But it had a uh, 885 megabytes per 11 out of 11.6 gigabytes of memory data. And I wanted to do this, so I'm going to probably do the same thing with the. Uh, Deepen. I'm going to record how much it's running with OBS cooking on it. Not like full cooking like it is here where it's up 1.2 gigs of memory being used. So I put this as a somewhat good memory usage. It's actually better when it's under 1 meg, but coming right out of the box and without OBS running, it's more like 700, 775 megabytes of memory being used which is pretty decent so yeah that's memory on that now you can see here solus and we're currently running the current 5.11.16.178 dot current kernel which is a pretty up to date kernel yeah and the way I'm figuring is they'll put out some tracks point I think 12 just came out 5.12 came out recently but yeah it's not too widely used yet and uh, so from 5.11 I'm going down every uh, point down every time it uh I mean, if I get some 5.9 kernel on it, then I know that's uh, that's uh, two points down from five. That's how I'm, how I'm working that on the kernel. So it's got a pretty current kernel on it, pretty good. And uh, you see, it's got 725 packages installed right there. That's pretty decent uh, amount of packages. Matter of fact, it's one of the better ones I've seen is for a package count coming out of the box. I've only installed uh, OBS and uh, NeoFetch and Hot Top, H Top on this, Hot Top, <laughs> H Top on this uh, distro so far, so it's not bad. I was down here, you got Bungie 10.5.3 on it, just for informational purposes. And that's about it. She's currently using 1.2 gigs of memory. Yep. So that's what I'm doing on that. And then now aesthetics. Now, how I came out of the box, I've changed the background since then. But one of the things that's interesting about bun this bungee is it's actually got a gnome base on it. I can go to Bungie system settings. It's basically GNOME system settings. So if you go down here to about, it says it's using GNOME version 
Now, when I first installed it with the with the download ISO, I got down on the thing. It wasn't 40.0, it was 3.18 or whatever the previous one was. And so, then I upgraded. I did one upgrade on it, and it came out to 40.0. So it's actually running in the background underneath this spongy is running GNOME, ver GNOME version 40.0. However, it does have the X11 window system on instead of Wayland. So if you go up here to background. The background it has, you can go with this. When it came out of the default, however, if I remember correctly, was... I want to say it was this one here. If I remember correctly. That's default. So, yeah, but anyway, it's got a lot of good backgrounds on here. Wallpapers. So, yeah, it gets a good score on that. It's got, now, it doesn't have a space one, so probably not to point off for it for that. <laughs> I like space backgrounds, obviously. Um, if you watch many of my videos, you know that. But, the one I like best out of these, I think, is the mountain here. Or the other mountain one. And this one. This one to head on here. I open that. Sort of like mountainous views, that, and so since I live in Colorado, I see mountains all the time anyway, so yay for mountains. <laughs> so, anyway, um, yeah, it's, the static stuff is pretty good. I think I gave that a four. Yeah, gave it a four. Configurability now, because it uses a GNOME basis for Bungie Desktop, it's pretty configurable. You can usually do whatever you want. Matter of fact, I made this, uh, it comes with a panel. So this panel here, yeah, if you go to Bungie Settings, Desktop Settings, right click on your desktop, you know that. Then you have your settings for Bungie in here. You can say widgets, appearance of window, decorations and controls, icons, cursors, notification positions, dark theme, animations. Then you can click desktop. Tell what you want to show on your desktop. We you want your home directory, trash, active mounts, desktop icons. Allowed at all. Policy. Whether you want to double click, single click. Icon size, normal. Double number of virtual desktop screens. That's uh, all set right there. And Raven's notification system. So you have several notification options you have there. Here's Windows systems. Here's where you set things up, how you want it to work. Now this automatic tiling isn't so automatic from what I can figure out. Yeah, you click that often. What it does is when you drag when you drag this up here. You'll see it turns yeah. and then it's hard to get it to activate. See it doesn't know is where there it goes. And it tiles. So that's my screen now that you can get another like you can get a uh yeah it's not automatically tile either, you have to set up here. But then it just overwrites it. Doesn't really give you automatic tiling that I can tell. So I just turn it off so it doesn't confuse things any. I accidentally tiling some uh, not real tiling on it. That I can get anyway, I play with that for a while. And yeah, bottom docks. Now this is where I where you can you know, uh, adjust your panel and go up here and say this allows you to put applets in your menus or these applets your settings 
Now, dock mode. I turn that on. It's what it normally looks like when you come out of the box with with it on the panel. And I just click that, and it turns into a dock. Pretty nifty, huh? Yes, yeah, so that's a good feature. So anyway, on the uh, static stuff, it looks pretty nice overall. Figurability is pretty comparable. Navigation, it's not hard to get around if you know GNOME at all. And actually, it's a little easier if you don't know GNOME because it's got a regular menu instead of the GNOME menu. It spreads, spews them out all over the place. Your desktop. And it's got the search bar in it, which is what I like. So you can easily put, pull up any uh, application you want, like LibreOffice. And you go down to the writer, calc, whatever, and hit enter. Do it all with the keyboard if you want. So that's actually the navigation pretty easy in this. Bungie, pretty configurable. And uh, quality of all wallpaper is good. Software Center. Check out Software Center and updates. That's right here in the niche. And it's pretty easy to use Software Center, from what I can tell. Here's your browsing. You can go here. General multimedia software. E streamer runtimes. Audio software. Video software. Let's be libraries, graphics, or you can use a search function. Well, if like you say you want, you like a shortcut, which I usually use. I don't know, but they yeah, they actually have it open. You can get shortcut in here, which is what I like personally, but. Uh, so I install shotgun in there for one pretty easy. Let's do that so you can see what it looks like. The details, change log, license. It tells you what license it's under. So it's free and open source cross platform and I like it because it it's got a good workflow for me. So I install that. Put in my password, and away she blows. She's installing. So yeah, you can install things on here. You can search for things pretty easy. And actually, it's got more software than you think for a distro that's all its own distro. Solus is just its own distro. It doesn't tell anybody else. So now it's removed. If I wanted to run shortcut, I can go. There it is. And there it is. Pretty fast and snappy too, isn't it? Yeah. So, there you go. Shortcut. Just like that, I install shortcut on their video. It's a good video editor too. I like it. So, now updates are... Also, you go in the Shopping Center, just go here to update. And if there's updates here, you can say check for updates. So, software is up to date because I updated once and apparently doesn't need anything else right now. <laughs> it's good to go. So, yeah, you install I haven't actually installed updates to this. It's the first time I install updates on most systems. I usually use the command line just because you never know how much stuff you got to install and it's easier to watch. And, and check me through everything's installing correctly when you're using a command line for it. If there's any big errors or anything, you spot them if it's got any messages, it'll spot for you. Yeah, so if you got any input, it's usually pretty easy and clear what you need to do. Whereas with this, sometimes it's some, some, some updates are better than others, but yeah, sometimes updates can be an issue. And you also got third party apps. You can install or not install. These are like not more proprietary type apps. So those options in the software center. Updating is pretty easy. 
We got a window manager uses his mutter, of course, since it's got gnome on it. And so the version of Solus is Solus Fortitude. Which is the most recent version based on Solus Fortitude, because Solus is the, is, the, is the distro for this. There is no other distro than Solus. Haha. <laughs> so, yeah, I like it. It's pretty and it's good and it's nice. And it works well. Previously, when I used Solus, I had some problems with some application not being in their repositories. And your only option, really, since there's no other way to get them, is to build them from source if you want to do that. But not too many people are going to want to do that. <laughs> most of the time, most people don't want it. So now, we'll, now that we investigate that, we'll go look at Deepen after I install it, of course. Here we are on the Deepin desktop using Deepin 20.2 from China, China, Wuhan, China. Yeah, it's a nice looking desktop. It's got all the rounded corners. Now you can set those rounded corners to be as small or as large as you want. It's a large size, you can tell. All the corners are kind of big, big rounded. You can adjust those to have her what size you want. So let's look at what we got here. Yeah, uh, eight the top. Yeah, uh, it's kind of high on there. Got some stuff stored in swap file, which you didn't have before. And it's running 1.4 gigabytes out of the 11.6 gigabytes I have on, on there. So, you can tell there she's in Pulse Audio. And it's also using X11, K1 X11. So, yeah, 1.4 seems to be its cutoff point for it. So, it's throwing things to swap file because before, before I had OBS cooking on this, it was a 1.4 then too. So, it's a little bit heavier than, uh, than Bungie is on that point. And, the aesthetics are obviously good because Deepin's known for its good aesthetics, so I put excellent on that. And there you got 5.10.18, so a little less of a of a kernel than what uh, Bungie had, which is 5.11. Of course, that's more probably a factor of the distro itself than the, the desktop per se. As to what kernel it put stalls in there out of the box. It's been updated and everything. Now, it's also based on Debian 10 Buster, so there's that. And it, so it's going to be a fairly stable system, I assume. Out of the box, and and you have a deepen terminal. You notice that's the difference. Some more deep and dark and bloom dark icon. I use this Kwin Window Manager. It's kind of interesting, kind of like KDE. It didn't really use it effectively, and then you couldn't install extensions and things onto it, just like GNOME in the uh, Bungie environment, you couldn't, I couldn't find a way to install extensions on GNOME there either. You notice it has 1,713 packages. Still a lot more packages than the 725 I had in Bungie. So Bungie wins on that point, I guess. So the software center on this is a little bit different. And... And then, now you can do updates to the software center, but it's not evident right off the bat where to go to do that. You have to scroll down here to get to here. Now I should say that all of the, there's no updates to this compass right now because I've done them already. Day. Now, you, ironically, you can also update this to system settings 
supposed to call control panel. Yeah, right there. Control center actually. And yeah, you go down here to updates. And it takes you this and you check for updates. And you install them right through here as well. And also you can do it like I did initially on the control panel. And since it's using Debian 10, it uses the app package manager. So probably don't know how to do that. Pseudo app up, update, pseudo app upgrade. So yeah. Now uh, it's fairly configurable. The system is overall about average, I'd say. All the different kind of things you can get: Minecraft, Steam, uh, Counter Strike, Mines. I'm gonna install that to see what it is. See what it looks like on here. Mines should be easy to do, huh? Around my C system, you have super tar, super tux cart, and a lot of the games, Lutris. Mine's installed successfully. Yay, that's how installation works. So, this you can also do searches up here. You want to say search for shotcut, which I did another one right there. And install it on here as well if I wanted to. Just like that. So yeah, it's about as good as the other one. As far as that goes. It's a little bit different. Little gates too. You got all these categories here you can check out. As well as your updates. My and apps you have installed on here already. Which some I know, some I don't. So let's uh Go check out mines. So, it's a little different than normal. Yeah. So, anyway, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but yeah, you get the idea. So, it looks like now. Yeah. See, yes, that is, it says good configurability is average, I think. Overall, navigation is good. It's got a nice menu system that, that uh, the search bar at the top. And yeah, it's got kind of categories listed over here. So if you want to look at videos. Hmm. So you have these, but all the new ones that you haven't used before have this little blue dot on them. So, yeah, you got Firefox, I installed that. Play Manager, my browser. Now, browser's kind of weird. And then they got their own proprietary browser. If you do a search on it, like say a search for Braille Coffee. Get everything in Chinese. <laughs> I guess there's a setting here you can change that probably. But yeah, everything's in Chinese. So that's what you when you download the Deepin OS. Get everything in Chinese. So yeah, I'm sure there's a setting I could probably change that language in in, in there. But I'm over, that's why I downloaded Firefox ESR so I could have access to an English browser easily or easier, I hope. It worked basically. So, yeah. All your wallpaper. Now, wallpaper, as you can see, I picked a mountain scene here. This is my want when I don't have any space themes. Yeah. And you got all these things, open terminal, display setting, wallpaper, screensaver. And you get this thing. And 
Yeah, this little thing where you can scroll around and you can see different ones. And the one that they use the default out of the box is from this one here. It's the one they had when they originally put it on here. When it comes out of the box, just like that. Not sure why I chose that. I guess that would look cool. Looks nice. Wouldn't be what I'd pick, but out of all those, but it's not bad. And so, but they have a nice aesthetic feel to the whole thing. Nice set of wallpapers. As good as, uh, this is probably an excellent set of wallpapers. The only thing I know they don't have in there is a space one. The last saw. I want my space software wallpapers. Help us in the updates. Talk about that. And repair. Talk about that. Yeah, so that's what I use the KWIN motor. Neither one of them use their window managers for to initiate tiling. And you can't, can't uh, install a extension or script like you can in KWIN on KDE to make it a tiling window manager if you want. So. Not that I could locate anywhere in here any, any, as it stands. So, yeah, that's this desktop. We'll go back and take a look at our scores and stuff and see what we've got on it. Yeah, and I took the scores as I originally saw them when I first and checked them before I installed OBS and that cooking and all that kind of stuff on it. So these are out of the box memory usage according to HTOP. 775 megabytes out of 11.6 gigabytes was what Bungie used out of the box. Now, later got up to 1.4 when I was running it, but originally it had 775 megabytes when I first installed it. It deep and had 1.4 gigabytes out of the same amount of memory. So, I figured that was good. It's not excellent. Like a window manager would probably be excellent. But it's uh, pretty good for a desktop. Especially with that. I know GNOME and Cinnamon and those can would probably run a lot higher than that. That's closer to what you might see on XFCE. So anyway, yeah. So I gave that a 3 because it's kind of average amount. It's kind of what GNOME Cinnamon used out of the box but and so it's average now aesthetics is good for bungee it had a nice looking setup excellent for deepen configurability was good yeah they based it on the off of gnome 40 whereas uh deepen uses qt as its programming language and it builds the desktop up from scratch i guess I don't want to use a pre existing one like Bungie does. So it's good on that. Average for that. I had a control panel like the thing they call a control center. And that was decent, I guess. So I labeled it average. There's some things I liked about the way that it. Uh, Settings you can set in, other things are restrictive. Yeah, so neither one of them were perfectly good, but but I think um, configurability, Bungie wins out a little bit over dead de deepen. And quality of navigation was average, and I say excellent on. I'm deep in mainly because it had a easy use menu and bungeed in too, but I think deepens was a little bit better. Then on quality wallpaper, we got a four for bungee, five for deepen. Yeah, bungee had some decent wallpapers. I think the wallpapers that came out of the box on deepen were a little bit better, a little bit more mountainous and all that good stuff. And more selections. Software Center was good and they labeled them as average. Now, 
theoretically. The only reason I labeled these average is because it wasn't really intu fully intuitive when I initially opened it up was what to do, where to go. And it had a search bar, so that part was intuitive. But I wasn't sure all these things on the left were, the categories and stuff they had. Whereas it's pretty clear on Bungie where the categories were and what you could look up and go into and dig around and play around with stuff if you wanted to. Okay, so software soon is good. Updates were good for both of them, pretty much. Easy to accomplish. You have four, three spots, two spots, graphical. You can do updates, you can do a software center, you can do it to settings and deepen. And Bungie, yeah, you, it's good. Because you ran through the process of doing updates and in the software center. Software apps, whatever you want to call it, app store. And you use all, you, both of them, of course, you can use command lines. Both of them use, uh, Solus uses his own package manager, EO package. Whereas Deepin uses, of course, the app because it's Debian based. You know, it looks a lot different when it starts cooking than Debian does. Number of packages, well, obviously Bungie wins out great on that one. So it gets five, whereas the uh, number of packages on this was average, I think, for an installation of this type. Now, on the kernel, both 5.10 and 5.11 are both good kernels. 5.11 is obviously a bit newer, so and this is after I updated, this is the kernel that was left. This one is installed when you install it, and this one is left when you update it. Didn't really change or update it. But they did this one, they installed 5.10.18, I think it was, out of the box when you installed the from the ISO, and then when you updated it, it turned it into 5.11.16. So, pop on that for Bungie. Mutter Window Manager and KWIN Window Managers. They were both just use those window managers, but they didn't use them to their full potential. No way that I could find to get tiling on Mutter. You know, I was using them 40, and I know that it has that option in, in there. And KWIN, which I've used the Tally Manager on that, matter of fact, on my other computer over here, I have a Neptune on it, and it uses KDE Plasma, KWIN, and it has a setting where you can install script to enable tiling on the Window Manager. And that's what I use on that one. But I couldn't find a place to put it in here, so I didn't use the full app, so they're both average on that. That comes out of a 40 per score for Bungie and a 38 score for, for Deepin. Now I did take 5 points off if you're concerned about proprietary systems being out of the box. That uh, reduced it down by 33 points. For somewhat, whatever score you deem was worth that amount. But anyway, it's, it reduces down to my estimation because of the question marks of security issues and privacy issues that the Wuhan, China. I imagine all the sending sending notices were sending my data back to Wuhan. Yeah, who knows where they're going? It's going somewhere. Sending, sending, sending. It kept saying as I updated. Uh, may mean nothing, may not be anything, but it may be some who knows. Only they know. Use your risk, I guess, but I'd go with uh, at least a gnome or the other distros that have deepened on it. You really want deepened, really got your heart set on it. it but it registered two points below Bungie, so we'll go back and check it out. So, what do I think about them? Well, like I said, I was impressed by Bungie. I tried Bungie one other time, I think. And I wasn't impressed with it at the time. 
but it seems much more flexible now than it was then. I don't know if that's true or not. May not have looked in the right places, may not have done the right things, who knows. But I liked it. I could live with it if I had to. And one of the things I liked about it is they used known 40. And even if it didn't use Wayland, well, I didn't check to see if it had a Wayland option in the uh, login screen. Like someone doing Swift Train X11 and Wayland based on your needs and stuff. I remember I liked Solus a lot. I've used it before. And Bundy's improved quite a bit. Well, they're improving it all the time. Who you knows? They might turn to it at some point if they. I can figure out how to install Gnome extensions on and get a tiling, tiling function on there. A Pop OS has. But I don't think the the uh, Solus repositories have Pop OS <laughs> functionality to add it in there. And Deepin, I. You know, I was kind of impressed with Deepin too. Some things I liked about, like I said, the settings and stuff. And it was good overall. I can use that if I had to, but questions of, of, of privacy and those kind of things still linger over it, I think. So that I, it's not the best option out there, I don't think. I'd rather probably use KDE or Cinnamon or, or even Bungie or something before I use Deepin. Your mileage may vary based on what your needs are. So with that said, remember to subscribe, like, click the notification bell if you want to keep up with my new videos that come out as they come out. I also should mention, if you want to support the channel, I have a donate link down in the description as well. So remember, may the Linux force be with you. Bye.